with another one. Uh, so these are some, uh, if, you, if you're a safe guy like I am, you're always looking for a longer pen. So check these out. These ones I bought from Amazon. Uh, I don't know. There's probably other brands. But the coolest thing about them, look at that. They're more like a paint pen. I guess they are ink, but they really write very well. So, yeah. And long reach, you could get them through any hole. So good for a carpenter, good for somebody that needs to uh, put uh, holes on the other side of a template or something longer. And that's, uh, that's about a one inch gap there, at least a one inch. So pretty cool. Check them out. All right, at the church repairing a panic bar. Issue is, does not unlock. Guess what brand it is? Adam's right. Probably the second worst, third worst design they've ever made. Um, issue is the hex key system is stripped out, allowing it to spin. Should be locked in place with Loctite. It looks like it worked loose or broke one or the other. So we gotta fix that. So this panic bar basically sits in here like this guy slides down to the hole. You put a hex key through there and that hex key system is unfortunately um, supposed to be Loctited in there and you can see it's not Loctited. And you can see it's not Loctited, you're able to spin that around. So just gotta Loctite that, reset it, get back to the next job. So what I do on these guys is before I take them out, you score where it lines up to. That way you know it's going to be precisely right where it needs to be. And then from the outside, you'll be able to line up that set screw, uh, the dogging screw rather. So yeah, make sure to always mark that. Make sure you know which way it's going in. Um, these are always problematic. These do strip out quite a bit. So you'll learn to live to swap those out really quick. This is a 15 minute job typically takes the maintenance men all day it takes me 15 minutes so we'll be back i put loctite on that lighting it set up and i'm going to uh, reinstall everything and test it all right so we'll do the shortest wall for my guitars i have in the basement um we're gonna do the albert lee models if you don't know who albert lee is albert lee's a british uh, blues guitarist or maybe consider him country uh either way Albert Lee started way back in the 60s, 70s, uh, originally was playing with the Everly Brothers, then went to um, Joe Cocker's band in the 70s, then went to Emmy Lou Harris, he's played with everybody, Buddy Guy, Eric Clapton, uh, Joe Bonamassa, everybody you could imagine he's played with, a uh, very good guy, an older guy, he's probably close to his 80s now at least, uh, still doing his thing. So these are the uh, Ernie Ball is the company, uh, Ernie Ball Albert Lee models. These are his own ones. These are the Ball Reserve, which is basically the Ernie Ball company would make a guitar on a very limited edition. They would only give it to friends and family and those who can afford it more, so I think. Um, so that was uh, Ernie Ball Family Reserves. They come with a certificate of authenticity. They usually only make about 100 of them. Um, it's sort of very unique because it does have like Mother of Pearl Inlays special hardware. Um, it, it's all very special that they, they try to keep it, uh, you know, very special high-end uh, high end uh, guitars. It does have a faceplate on there. It does come with, like I said, a certificate of authenticity. They only make so many a year. Um, that is the single coil, which if you don't know and you're not a guitarist, there's usually two classifications of guitars single coil which are basically a leo fender design which i am a very big fan of leo fender as you could tell uh fender guitars i got tons of uh advertisement i will probably show that throughout the upcoming weeks i'm actually taking all my guitar stuff from the first floor moving it into my basement which is going to be a big undertaking so um that's a single coil uh, those are usually indication of the three of them typically is what it is. And uh, next one we have is, an, again, a uh, Ball Family Reserve Limited Edition. Same model. Um, it's just this is what they call humbuckers. So single coil guitars had a tendency back in the day 
they were very thin sounding, um, which is what they were prized for. Unfortunately, they also created a lot of AC hum. Um, so when they did some electronic works in here, I could, I could explain it to you, but it's probably over most people's head. Um, they, they basically created a coil to hum cancel. So they call them hum bucking pickups. And that's what they are. These are humbuckers. You can see they're a wider. Um, this is a, a limited edition as well. This one, I think they only made like 50 of, I want to say. It was very limited. Um, some nice things are that this is the uh, ebony neck, fretboard rather. Beautiful paint job. I love that glossy stuff. But uh, he signs these. He signed all these ones. Um, and like I said, the necks on these are just second to none. Um, I'm not even a big country western guy. I guess he's a country western or blues. Um, but he did sign all those. And like I said, they're very limited edition. I just love the, the paint. I mean, in person, it just really sparkles. It's orange, but it's got orange, greens, yellows, blues, reds in there. Really sparkles nice. Um, and then my last one I have for Albert Lee, at least, is the uh, last one. This was actually a production model. Once again, humbucker models. Um, these ones are sort of notorious that they were the full neck and uh, that's why I like them. I really like these guitars with the full rosewood neck because you don't see that. Um, a couple years ago, they actually outlawed selling of the rosewood or, or importing of the rosewood. So you couldn't sell it. If you couldn't import it, you can't get it. Um, but they, I think they've relaxed that as far as I know. Um, but I got a lot of these models where it's a uh, full rosewood neck and there's just nothing like it. It's just such a smooth wood. And it actually plays so smooth. And uh, it's just pretty amazing. If you're a guitar player, it's really something you should check out. So that is it for today. Um, that's my shortest wall of guitars there. I have lots more Fender stuff coming. But I got lots more coming. So don't worry about it. We'll be back. Hey guys, Jeff with HKS, uh, just letting you know we're heading up to Antioch, which is about, what, 40 miles from me? 30 miles? It's far, but it's one of our customers we do a lot of work with. I told him it was going to be expensive. He says, you know what, you got to pay for quality, and I like that, so I always do a good job for him, no questions asked. Bailed him out many a times throughout the years, so... Uh, we're going up there today. He's got a bad Simplex L1000. Didn't want to buy a new one, which I get because they're astronomical now because everything's expensive. And uh, we ended up, uh, we're going to go up there, pull that one out, put cover plates on, and just put a regular old grade one lever set because everybody that works in uh, Burger King is a bunch of gorillas, it seems like. Anyways, we're going to do that, take care of them, and uh, we'll be checking in once we get up there. Should be quick and painless. All we're going to do is uh, pull that lever, put cover plates on to cover the existing uh, lock uh, preps for the L1000 series simplex and uh, put a new lever set on there, storeroom function, so it's always locked so nobody can get back there and steal them good onion rings. All right, guys, we'll catch up with you later. Take care. All right, we're wrapping the day up, guys. Uh, heading home. I just stopped at my buddy's shop. He's actually got two shops. Uh, it's about two counties away from where I am. I was way up there in his area. So I stopped uh, and seen him. I, I'm actually pretty friendly with all the locksmiths in the area, at least by me. He's not really in my area, but uh, I know him. He's an old, old timer. So I actually walked in, and he was, I think he's sore at me now because he was... Uh, making keys for a uh, condom vending machine from like the 60s maybe 70s somewhere in there so he just happened to open it as I was walking in and I said to him I, I wonder if those are still good or not I, he goes I don't know probably not I said what's the serial number say he says where, where where's the serial number I said oh it's at the bottom of it you probably never have to put them that far down hey old <laughs> he gave me a dirty look so anyways I'm heading home 
I'll catch up with you guys later. Take care.